My guys, it's a mere three weeks till the election. Oh, my God. So stay sane in the face of all the gaslighting. Now, since we last spoke, Bob Woodward's book, which reveals many things, one of which was that the Yeti, early on in the pandemic, gave Russia um, testing equipment for COVID when people were struggling for supplies in the US. Now, that's appalling. However, what is more surprising is the Kremlin confirmed it. Now, the Kremlin doesn't confirm anything, right? Nothing. So why did Putinchka confirm this? Let's have a quick look at that before we get into the other crimes and misdemeanours. What was that about? The Kremlin actually validating that claim in the book. Come on down. Just a few cards on this. Oh, oh, I see. Right. Now, this was a time when the world was suddenly burdened by a global event. People were dying in huge numbers. There was still no vaccine and the tests were essential. This is deliberate by Putin. Here's traditionally the unwanted offer, but what America doesn't want to hear perhaps, because what it means is he's only admitted this in order to stir trouble with the election in the sense that it's Putin saying he's my guy, was then, is now. You can vote in who you like, but I've got him. He's my Yeti. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Well... Now, more scandals unfolding with the Supreme Court. So this has to be Kamala and Walsh's numero uno priority because a democracy can't function with a corrupt Supreme Court. So it was only, remember I was saying, I was only saying in my last video or the last week, when Kavanaugh was going up for appointments and it was the most volatile um, argy-bargy that went on around an appointment, but I said, remember the 1,500 tips the FBI got and didn't act on? It's worse than that. Worse than that, there were over 4,000 tips to the FBI. Now... And he was appointed. Thank you, Susan Collins and others who made that possible. <laughs> Excuse me. So now we have a scenario where two justices, Alito and Thomas, um, are at the beginning of a process of being impeached for corrupt handling of monies. Right now, the Supreme Court famously still has no actual ethics committee. I mean, that's a scandal and a nonsense in itself. Right? But now we have this third one that potentially um, Kavanaugh could be described as an illegitimate appointment mm -hmm. because his screening process was far from complete was absolutely inadequate for a Supreme Court justice. Now, all of this was on the watch of John Babyface Assassin Roberts, who turns out to be far worse than any of us dreamt. So now, 
be. You've got to give credit where credit's due. Sheldon Whitehouse has been meticulously for years, at least four years, possibly longer, following the money. And he has exposed all these things. So big applause for Sheldon Whitehouse, who single-handedly has done his best to point out the inadequacies of the Supreme Court. So let's have a look here. So I guess my question is, Kamala, will she have the courage, will she have the support, will she have the ability with so much else on her plate to prioritise this? Will we see a significant change and possibly impeachment of two justices? Let's have a look here. And don't forget, those impeachment proceedings with receipts, as everyone says these days, has already been submitted to Congress. And AOC and a couple of other Dems did this. They actually tabled this information about Alito and Thomas, knowing there wouldn't be time before the election for it to act, knowing they didn't have control of Congress. But they did it then, so it's in the pipeline. And so um, should the gods be willing, it can go ahead. So let's have a look. Will we see significant shift in power at the Supreme Court? If they could get rid of three, replace them with three decent, sane people who maybe haven't committed a crime for the last three weeks, that might be the only criteria anymore. I mean, really? Will we see a change? Okay. Biden's turned up. Oh, judiciary's turned up. Oh. oh, I've just been with Hogarth and I keep getting this card. Now, okay, so Biden's here. Biden is not a stupid man. He is aware of these contraventions of propriety and so forth. However, in that sense, he's run out of time as head of the party. He will be handing on the baton. Okay. So this is my Ruth Bader Ginsburg card. Just wish she'd retired a little earlier, but that be that as it may. See, bless. So that is happening. We're going to have to wait a while. This card is a bit like the hangman. It's a wait a while card. It won't be straightforward. Why? Because big money, king of pentacles, is heavily invested, whether that's Opus Dei, Heritage Foundation, Federalist Society, all of the above, those Christo-fascist forces are propping up this court. However, outcome card, strength. And in this case, because it talks about inner strength, this is strength and will of the American judicial system, hopefully, which will be reinvigorated on the other side of a, a Kamala Tim victory. Okay, but there is the strength. They have to find the strength or... It doesn't matter what else they do politically. It's the end of the foundation of a democratic system. You can't have a commercial media, which everyone has everywhere in the world, a really under-resourced public education system and not have an independent judiciary. Like it's too many pillars of democracy that have been pulled down. So this is essential, this is vital, and I think her in her legal heart she knows this so she'll put the best people on it good phew hope so hope so 
And Kamala, please, I've said it before, I'll say it again, don't make your brother-in-law Attorney General or any big public post. He, I'm sure he has a legal contribution to make. Please don't go down that route. However, not every president seeks out Australian psychics before they make a move, so we'll see, but I'm just putting it on the record. Okay, so now... Oh, we should not be surprised. Trump's God Bless America Bibles printed in China. This is the sort of thing that his followers ignore over and over and over. You know, can you believe? Now, that wasn't my question. So coming back to the storms, and I don't think we've seen the last of the big destructive storms. Okay. Is it true, can someone let me know, DeSantis isn't taking Kamala's calls? Would that be right? Meanwhile, in disinformation land that spread daily, spread and spewed by Vance, we'll come back to him too, the Yeti and Elon the muskrat. Now, while I'm shuffling here, I'm sorry, but in a case of a national emergency or at least a statewide absolute um, crisis, to deliberately spread misinformation that could damage people's uh, ability to recover, seek help, etc., shouldn't that be a crime? You know, if it was a mere mortal who put it out on social media saying, you know, all the evacuation centres are closed or something when they were in fact open, I'm sure that is a criminal act in itself. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so the muskrat. Yeah, he's been saying the Dems are diverting funds to fund millions of illegals, you know, the usual nonsense. Um, but one of the things he did was, I'll give free internet to anyone who's affected by the hurricanes. Oh, and you think, oh, maybe it's not all bad or something, but you'd be wrong. You'd be so wrong. Why? Because it's free after you've paid your $400 Starlink starter kit. They're just shameless. They're just totally shameless. But in other good news, four of Tesla's top executives walked this week. All right, so let's look at Elon's hiring history here. So when he took over... Twitter in order to, you know, pull its guts out and kick it to the curb. He sacked an enormous number of people, including technical people, including legal people who were keeping a very good eye on hate speech and everything else. He got rid of those. The next incarnation six months in were the executives who were left or walked. Now the Tesla execs are walking. This would tell you. He is a very bad boss. You know, these are prestige jobs. And for people to walk out in numbers, in numbers. So I'm just going to ask, does the muskrat regret this embedding with Trump? Does he regret it? Is he smart enough to be sorry at that? I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a look. Elon. Well, huh. here he is as the Knight of Pentacles. He's been demoted from the King of Pentacles to the Knight of Pentacles, who's not going anywhere quickly. Okay, that's interesting in itself. I think he's got less money now than he did five years ago. I think he's got less money now than he did three years ago because he's not having much business success. He pays too much 
for the businesses and then runs them into the ground, just like the Getty, marriage made in heaven. He's isolated. He is not listening to the real world because he feels he dictates what the world should think. I mean, that's fully scary, isn't it? But he's actually convinced of that. So he's isolated in his man cave. The truth will hurt, Elon. Sorry. I don't think he realises it yet, but there's more to come. This is his outcome card because he has been so belligerent and foul. He's lost respect. That's respect of the business community because he's not good at business. He's just like Trump. Give him a billion dollars, see him five years later, he'll have half a billion then, you know. So he's actually peaked and coming down the other side and there's plenty of things that will come back to haunt him, but I don't think he realises it yet. He can't afford to think about it yet. So he went on Moscow-sponsored Tucker with an F, Carlson, and he actually admitted that if Kamala won, he'd be. So it's on the horizon, something for us all to look forward to. Now, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay. Just quickly, a bit of news on J.D. Vance. I'm not going to read cards on him again yet. So I watched an interview with J.D. Vance and the interviewer said, well, the caption for the video said, you know, J.D. Vance slammed in this interview. And I thought, oh, goody. No, what constitutes a slam is not what I saw. So... The female interviewer asked him the same question. Do you admit that the last election, uh, that Trump lost the last election? And he fluffed with what he did in the debate and everything. Oh, you know, we're only looking forward now. We're not looking back. And do, 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 do. Dodging, this is the most essential question. The peaceful transition of power is the most essential question. Couldn't answer. She asked him four times and then gave up. And I was thinking, how would an Australian journalist handle this? And I think it would have been a bit different. I think Australian journalists would have asked him once. He would have fluffed the answer. He'd be asked a second time. After that, I think an Australian journalist would then have waded in and say, it appears you're extremely reluctant to answer this question. So I'm asking you, are you afraid that if you admit that he lost the vote, you would lose your MAGA people who would be upset they'd been lied to for four years and many of whom have gone to jail? Is that your biggest fear? Or are you more afraid of your boss? I think an Australian journal would have not asked the question four times and then said, oh, well, you know. You have to have a go. Have to have a go. Okay, now. Um, just give me a moment to check my notes. Oh, Devon Boring Nunes, who we'd all sort of tipped out of our brains, I think, because, you know, you've got to catch up with the latest 24 hours in crime. Now, he's been the CEO of Truth Social since 2021 and he's being investigated for misappropriation of company funds. Kel surprise. So I guess my question is, was this Devin Nunes skimming what little cash flow Truth Social has, because I think it only turns over 300000 a year and debts are one and a half million or so, so. You know, the figures are not good from a real business's perspective. So my question is, did Devin Nunes skim it off the top for himself or was he caught doing it for the Yeti? Was he the mechanism 
that all the small mum and dad, MAGA investors, you know, put in over and over. So did he do it for the Yeti or did he do it for himself or was it a mix? I'll use the circus cards for Devon Nunes, right? Now, while I'm shuffling these, I digress. Trump is refusing to sign the standard documents every candidate signs before they enter the last phase of the election process. He's just refusing. Now, again, if it was a functioning legal system, he would have a team of heavyweight lawyers saying to him, if you don't, or even his lawyers saying, if you don't sign this, you're not eligible. I mean, it's quite simple, really. But no, they'll let him go ahead without signing the documents. And I'm sure at least one of them says, you know, I hereby sign the oath that I will, you know, be part of a peaceful transfer of power. Nothing will happen. You can't blame him. You can't blame him. People protect him. So back to Devin Nunes. Back to Devin Nunes. All right. Oh, it's precious. <laughs> Well, these cards are colourful. Yeah. So here he is, the gambler, looking at the money on the table. Right? Is he going to cash in his chips? Right. Excuse me, that's what he was thinking about. Now, why was he thinking that? Because they're losing money hand over fist. Emotionally, he was worried. Why? Because he knows the Yeti will blame him for the economic failure of Truth Social, not himself. So he was worried about that. He's kept the acrobatics going for three years. No mean feat. I think he should get a little, little badge, you know, for effort. You know, corruption attempted, not quite complete or something like that. And this is the three of wands waiting for your ship to come in, in this case waiting for your wagon to come in. I think he's not sleeping very well. I think he's not sleeping. He'll be the patsy. I think the Yeti will make him the fall guard. Now, um... Last question for today is going to be on Steve Bannon. I think we'll stay with the circus cards because it was Steve Bannon and Paul Manafort, as we all know, who were the masterminds, and we often hear the term criminal masterminds, behind the 2016 campaign. So it was Manafort who said to candidate Yeti in 2015, tell them they're the forgotten people. They'll love that. So the Yeti went out and said, you are the forgotten people. And everyone went, yes, yes, right. Then Manafort said, tell them you'll build a wall. Keep all the Mexicans out, right. And Trump from Queens, famously, actually didn't get that. But he's saying, why would I talk about a wall? Why would you build a wall? You know, like, oh, can't I do this? Anyway, he tried it, and we all know the rest is history because people are bigoted and reinforce bigotry in others and others are out-and-out out racist and are convinced of their own white supremacy and others are just scared their lives aren't going well, so let's kick the dog, right? It's just, yeah. So Bannon, now the point is Bannon famously said, and this has been exposed, I'm not sure if it's in the Woodward book, but it's been exposed already, but it got lost in the deluge. 
Bannon said to a group of Chinese businessmen who were visiting before the 2020 election, he said, look, it's all right, no matter who wins, we'll just say he won. He'll just come out and say he's won. And you can see these Chinese businessmen, it's a video clip, ah, thinking, what on earth? Sounds like what we do or something. But it wasn't just that case. It was Bannon's um, strategic idea to just claim victory. So that really undermines, if you think with clear eyes, that undermines everything about the stolen election, that we're just going to say it was stolen. They actually had it as a plan. So, so Bannon's in jail, sitting in the yard, waving out through the bars. He'll be out in another month. So I think he comes out just a few days before the election. But let's go and see what Bannon's got to say for himself going forward. Let's have a look here. Bannon. The reason I'm on YouTube is Steve Bannon, thanks to Kirsten Langston, but it's another story for another day. Okay, let's have a look what's happening to Bannon now. He gets the Ace of Cups too and the Republican Elephant. Oh. All right, let's pull one more. Oh, look, really and truly. What a circus is about. They're about illusions, right? The moon card can also be about mental health. From what I understand of Bannon's background, he was quite a smart guy, a bit obsessed with military history to be a normal 22-year-old, 28-year-old, 32-year-old, but now it's morphed into full-blown mental health issue for Steve Bannon too. The barking dogs, woof, woof. He's not done yet. This is leading into the election. He's going to come out doing the equivalent of fight, fight, right? Ace of Cups whipping up emotion, emotion being hatred and suspicion of anyone who doesn't look like you, okay? So that's it. Now, he is far from a darling of the Republican Party, but he still has clout. He still has the strength of the old elephant. He still has the elephant memory of what people owe him. So even though the Yeti said, even when he had him in the White House, you look like a homeless guy, Steve, go and brush your hair and change your clothes, um, he's still got clout. But at the same time, his ideas, which are, go, oh, we're just going to say it was stolen, still prevail and ultimately become the Ten of Wands burden for the Republicans, the, Rep the elephant sitting on its ass, right? Okay. So let's hope that symbolism, that they get pushback. All right, guys, so let me say I've got a lot of collabs coming up and I'll let you know when they are, when I've got definite dates, but in the next few weeks. So there's the regular Saturday Night Live with Hogarth, Lady G's in transit, but that's every Saturday night, 7 p.m. EST. But very soon I'll be doing a one-on-one, -on -one, no cards with Andre the Astrologer, we like to have a rave every couple of months. That's coming up soon. I'm going to hook up with Celtic Sheila and also Deanne Shieldmaiden, Linda G and I are going to have a girl's night. So I'll keep you up to date with all those. Lots of love. Put your comments in and you guys take care. Big love. Mwah.